Hello everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to use tabs inside Filament Form Builder. So it's a way to organize your forms into separate tabs that you can easily navigate between. And it's very useful if you have very large forms. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have a simple form that we have built throughout the course. So if you're new and you haven't seen the previous episodes, it's just a simple uh, Filament Form. Okay, so we have title, slug, all this content you see here. So what I want to do is divide this into three tabs. The first tab is going to be these first four fields, title, uh, slug, category, and color. Second tab is going to be this content. I want it to be full width. And then on the last tab, we are going to have image and the meta. So let's go ahead and see how we can create these tabs. So here I have my uh, resource file, which is going to be post resource. Inside the form, we can go ahead and access a new field called tabs. And it's going to be inside for filament forms components tabs and you have to call the make method on it exactly like any other field we have used so far now we can give it any name you like i'm going to say uh, create new post and unlike something like section where it accepted a schema the tabs actually accepts a tabs okay so you need to call tabs and pass it in an array of individual tabs okay so i'm going to put a comma over here and then inside this array you can create as many tabs as you like so a tab is basically a class inside filament, forms, components, tabs, tab. Let me show you guys the import in case uh, you're manually importing them. So this is for the tabs and then this is for the tab. And then a tab is exactly identical to something like a section, as a matter of fact. So here I can go ahead and create, let's say, tab one. I'm going to name it tab one so we can easily see. And it accepts a schema exactly like a section, exactly like this form over here. And inside the schema, you can go ahead and put as many uh, form inputs or elements as you want. So let's go ahead for tab one. I wanted these four fields so I can go ahead and copy it. They are over here, title, slug, category, and color. So let me go ahead, cut them. And I'm going to put them inside our tab one schema. As you guys can see, I'll save it. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a new tab. So in order to create a new tab, you can just go ahead and copy this, but basically just go ahead, do tab, make, and then we can name it whatever we like. Let's say a content and then call in the schema method and then pass in an array inside the schema. So again, the schema works exactly like this form schema. Okay. Inside it, you just put your form elements. So for this page two, as the name suggests, it's the content. I'm just going to put our markdown editor, this one over here inside of it. All right. Now, for the time being, I'm going to comment everything else. I just want to show you guys these two tabs that we have. So let me go ahead and do a quick reload. Now we have two tabs. Now by default, uh, this tabs field only takes one column. Okay, so uh, on my form itself, I'm actually, I have it defined as three columns. Okay, and if you guys are not familiar with columns, I do have a video on layouts. But basically, it's like a bootstrap or a grid, right? It, it has three columns. And by default, the tabs takes one column. So let me go ahead and delete this. One way is we can make this be one column. And if we do that, it will take full page. If that is something you want, you uh, you're, don't, don't always want it to be full page. But if you want, that's one way of doing it. Or you can have it still be three columns. And, and on your tabs, go ahead and call this method of column full span and have it take full width, okay? And if I reload again, even though this is back to three, we still, it's taking full width. And if you take a look, guys, we have two tabs. I can go ahead and navigate between them. And if I have a very large form with a lot of content inside of it, it makes it very easy to organize it, okay? Very nice. Now, we still have one more tab to make, which is going to be for our image and metadata. So I'll just copy the content tab and I say, I guess, meta. And we don't need this inside of it. And we did, I did comment these. So if we had this image, which is the file upload, I'll co I co comment it or I copy this. Uh, I'll put it inside here and then I'll un uncomment it. And then after that, we have this tags and checkbox. Okay. And I'll put it under the file upload. I need to uncomment this. And after that, I'm going to delete actually all these commented codes because we don't know, we no longer need them. So let's format this. Let's go back to a reload. And now we have three tabs that we can uh, navigate between and it has a very nice looking UI. So there are a few other things we can do guys, such as give these an icon. So it's very easy to add an icon. You can go ahead and select any of your tabs 
and call in a method called icon, just like this. And inside here, we can pass in basically a hero icon. It's going to work exactly like the navigation icon. As a matter of fact, you can go ahead and I can copy this. Okay. And it should work over here. And if you're not familiar with hero icons, just go ahead on Google and search hero icons. It's a free icon pack by the creators of Tailwind, if I'm not mistaken. So you can go ahead and copy any of these. Just click on, uh, just copy the name over here. Okay, so let's say I want a box. I'm not sure. Let's say this inbox. I'm going to copy this. If I want the icon to be inbox, you need to have this hero icon prefix. This O means it's an outline icon. If you want a solid icon, which is basically they are like filled out, filled in, you need to put S. And then if you want the mini, you need to do M. Okay, so let's say I want the mini icon. I'm going to say inbox mini. Okay, let's save this. And now if we go back, we get the mini version of the inbox. So that's how you define the icon using a hero icon. Now you can also change the position of this icon. Let's say you want it to be after tab one. You can go ahead and call another method called icon position. And to control this, there is actually an enum called uh, icon position. Okay, and it, it was inside app filament, I think inside, let's see, did I include it? Let's try again, icon position. Yes, yeah, inside filament, support enums and then icon position. And it has two options, basically before and after. Now by default, it's always before, so you need to go ahead and use after. And this will basically move the position of the icon. So let's go ahead and do a reload. Now the icon is on the right. So that's how you control the icon itself. Now there is one more extra option you have. There's something called badge. You can basically pass it in a badge. I can say hi. It can take a string. You can pa uh, It can take a number. It's up to you what you want to pass to it. But you can also add a nice looking badge just like this. So now that we have covered this, guys, there is one more thing I would like to cover. And it is related to basically setting the default page. So let's say you have three pages and you want page number two or page number three to be selected by default. So right now, if I reload, we always are on page one. So what you can do is let me minimize all these tabs. You can go on your tabs, this bigger uh, group element, and call a method called active tab. And it will accept a number between one till the number of tabs you have, okay? So we have three tabs, it will be either one, two, three. So if I pass in three, it will have this meta tag be active by default. So if I reload, as you can see, it, we are on the meta tag, okay? Very nice. Now, one more thing you can do, guys, is you can go ahead on your tab and call a method, which is called, I believe, URL. Let's see, query, yeah, persist tabs in query string, quite a long method. And what this will do is this will actually uh, keep the state of your tabs, which tab you're on in the URL. So if you copy the link and you pass it to someone else or you bookmark it, you will open up in the exact same tab. So let me show you an example. Our default is to open up on tab three, but I'm going to go ahead and open up tab two. And in the URL, it might be a bit small for some of you, but it has actually stored my current URL. Sorry, my current tab, which is a content tab. So if I copy the URL, go ahead and open up on a new page. I'm going to be on page number two. So that's what this persist tab in query string does. And it might be useful for some of you guys, especially when viewing content, if you have a, let's say post and someone is viewing it and they want to pass in the link to another admin to also see the exact same page, then this is going to be quite a useful feature. And I believe that is it guys for today's episode. I just wanted to show you guys how to use tabs inside filament. It's a quite a useful feature for organizing your forms and making them look much more pretty and easier to actually view and use. So if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, I appreciate it. If you guys like the video and subscribe so you get notified of the latest episode, it also helps the channel grow. And as always, I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.